Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome at those gathered in person and those tuning in online to Church of the Resurrection for this Sunday, June 26th. My name is Stephen Blackmore. I'm the rector here at Church of the Resurrection. And uh, we'll be leading you through today's uh, worship, uh, Reverend Margaret uh, presiding and, uh, and Leon reading the gospel. And we'll be uh, reflecting uh, more in depth the Old Testament reading today. So look forward to that. A few announcements before our worship does begin. Firstly, a hearty thank you to all those who participated in yesterday's barbecue uh, in the parking lot. And uh, we had a good turnout, a good chance just to socialize and, uh, and connect over good food. And special thank you to the uh, planning team uh, Tammy and uh, Mary and Adam, uh, who are over here. Thanks for their hard work. And I think there may be some uh, snacks and, and pop available at coffee hour today, too. Uh, and you can talk to Sheila about that. Uh, secondly, uh, if you didn't get the, uh, the e-blast this week, uh, we are loosening some of our protocols, so the wearing of masks is now optional in the space, and uh, we'll also are allowed to participate in the sign of the peace in a physical manner. Uh, we do want everyone to be sensitive to varying degrees of comfort with, uh, with the easing of restrictions, and so uh, some of us might feel we're ready to do that, and others may not be in that place, so let's just be sensitive to that as we move forward. And uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time still sort of discerning a return to the Common Cup, uh, but that is uh, something that we'll be thinking about uh, over the next few weeks, and we'll keep you apprised to decisions there. We begin this time together of worship by acknowledging that we are meeting on the land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This land has been inhabited by indigenous peoples from the beginning. And we thank all the generations of indigenous people who have taken care of this land and been its stewards for thousands of years. We give thanks for the countless ways they have assisted the settler peoples who came to inhabit the land. We also recognize the contributions Métis, Inuit, and other indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening this region, the provinces, and Canada as a whole. May the Creator hold us gently in this time as all mourn the loss of innocent indigenous children's lives. Miigwech, all my relations. Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Would you stand as we sing our opening hymn?
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have taught us that through your Son, that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen for God's word. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgad. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I'm being taken up from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He took up his man the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took his, the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. children around want to help me here? Come on up. No kids? No kids? No. I, I guess I'm going to do it on my own here. 
Somebody come, come on up. Come, come, come. Hey. Come, 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 come. Hey. You come, you come, you come on up. This is your place. You want to turn around? You come over here so the, the camera will pick you up. See that guy over there? You pick you up. You pick you up. Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered the village of Samaria to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no way to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts the hand to the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, may only your word be spoken, may your word be heard, and may your word be lived. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, there was a new Canadian Prime Minister who has just taken power. An outgoing PM, Justin Trudeau, says to him, I have left you two letters. When you get into problems, open the first letter. If you still have problems, open the second letter. Well, about one year into his leadership, things are going badly for the new guy. He then remembers the words of the former leader, and he opens the first letter, which reads, blame me for all your problems. <laughs> the new guy does this, and everything is fine for a little while. But sadly, things go from bad to worse, so he opens the second letter, which reads simply, sit down and write two letters. Leadership transitions are rarely easy. And with the announcement of my resignation last week, this parish now finds itself in the unexpected position of transition once again. And interestingly, today's first lesson deals with the topic explicitly as the prophetic mantle is passed, quite literally, from Elijah to his protege, Elisha. Now, a little disclaimer, I in no way wish to compare myself to the great prophet Elijah. Okay? So that's a non-starter. But I do feel an exploration of this story may yield fruit for us as Church of the Resurrection discerns its future. So let's dive into the story a little bit. It's a story of two prophets who are traveling together to the Jordan River. One is a grizzled veteran spiritual warrior who helped turn Israel from the pagan god Baal back to Yahweh. The other is the prophetic apprentice 
waiting to champion Yahweh's supremacy over Israel and its neighbors. And their journey takes them to places rich in significance to Israel's history. So quick look at some of the geographical places mentioned in the story. First, they go to Gilgal, where a shrine marks two momentous beginnings for the people of God. Firstly, the united Israel, the people of Israel, crossing into the promised land we read about in Joshua chapter 4. And then in 1 Samuel 11, we read about the establishment of Israel's monarchy here in this place. Now, the next stop on their journey is Bethel, which is a royal sanctuary near the border of the southern and northern kingdom. And it's a symbol, then, of fractured Israel, which was divided between the northern and the southern kingdoms. And we read about that in 1 Kings 12. The third stop on their journey is Jericho, a famous city, of course, with its great walls. And it's interesting because it represents some of the best and worst aspects of the nation. On the one hand, Jericho represents national unity, obedience to Yahweh, and Yahweh's power and faithfulness, which we read about in that great story of the walls of Jericho tumbling down in Joshua chapters 3 to 6. But the city also represents the arrogance of Israel's kings, personified in the villainous King Ahab, who called this city home. And so then the prophets continue on their journey, and finally they arrive at the Jordan River. And the Jordan River itself is a boundary region, an in-between place, a crossing place, and the site of transitions. And so the powerful symbolism in the geography alone tells us that this story is about more than prophetic succession. Commentator L. Daniel Hawk put it this way, the episode, in short, marks a pivotal moment that inaugurates a wide-ranging reordering of Israel's life and faith. Elijah represents a past defined by Israel's on-again, off-again loyalty to Yahweh, recently demonstrated by Jezebel's war against Yahweh and his prophets, and by Ahab's determination to wield royal power apart from the claims of God. Elisha represents a significantly reconfigured future that as yet has only been glimpsed through Yahweh's command that Elijah anoint Elisha as his prophetic successor to anoint Jehu as the new king of Israel and Hazael as the new king of Damascus. Now time moves from past and remembering these great places representing key moments in Israel's past and moves into the future as Elijah is taken up in the whirlwind with Elisha set to help lead God's people into God's future. And this transitional moment is framed by two miraculous actions. When each prophet takes a turn, striking the Jordan with the mantle and then crossing on dry ground. And that phrase that Donna read for us today, passing on dry ground, alludes to two other instances of profound change for Israel. At the Red Sea, the crossing of these waters transformed Israel from an enslaved nation to a liberated people united by covenant to Yahweh. And then later, similarly, the Jordan River was parted when priests entered bearing the Ark of the Covenant at the direction of Joshua on their way into the Promised Land. And at that time, Israel changed from being a wandering people in the wilderness into a settled people inhabiting the Promised Land. So once again, the people of God are being led into a time of transformation and change. With Elijah's departure, the past he represents is closed. Elisha is left, and the future he represents begins when he strikes the water and asks that all-important first-order question, where is Yahweh, the God of Israel? Where is God? This is the question we ask in times of turbulence and uncertainty, of challenge and change when we are uncertain as to what our future holds. And there are some keen insights this story might offer us as we find ourselves in a season of uncertainty. So two points for reflection. Firstly, we might interpret the story as teaching that the new age does not necessarily require a rejection of the old. The new may actually be a reconfiguration of the old to meet new challenges and opportunities. 
In this moment of transition, Elijah, the central prophetic voice of his time, journeys to the Jordan with the next one charged to speak God's word in a new time for a new people. And Elijah tries to make a clean break by taking the journey alone. But Elisha would have none of it. And so they journeyed together. And together at the Jordan, Elijah's last miraculous act, when he strikes the water and the water is parted, would become Elisha's first miraculous act as a great prophet when he takes his turn. And the fact that the same mantle is used in both instances can symbolize the continuity between God's work in the past and what God will do in the future. One of the great gifts of this parish is a succession of excellent priestly ministry that has complemented a vibrant and exceptional lay ministry. And I'm proud to have served alongside excellent leaders like Mike D., Stephen Murray, Rick Jones, and many others. I benefited from their faithful work of sowing gospel seeds and initiating faith formation initiatives. And I count it a privilege to have come alongside the capable cohort of preachers that we have here at Resurrection. And you may not know this, but we've been meeting together, uh, the preachers and I, every few months to explore upcoming scripture readings and to share what we've learned in the craft of preaching. And it's been inspiring to me to be able to sit and listen to what the Spirit is saying through the many voices represented here in this parish. Even the development of online ministry through live streaming and an up-to-date website, it was the work on building of what came before, of finding new ways to share the familiar message of God's love for us and for God's world. And leadership to come, interim and then a new rector, will continue to look for ways, both old and new, of embodying God's love. We are all connected to the family of God that spans space and time, that finds roots in the stories of the ancient people of God. We can give thanks that as God calls one person to a new situation, God also leads another to, st to stand in the gap. And it is a great comfort to me to know that God holds this parish firm in God's hands and that exciting new opportunities are on the horizon. Secondly, we might reflect, uh, again, commentator Daniel Hawk writes and reminds us that today's reading reminds faithful readers that God is present and active amidst profound change. Indeed, God has already gone ahead of the transitional moment and is making a way through it. Yahweh has spoken directly into the future by directing Elijah to authorize new political regimes. And a new prophet has been called, mentored, and stands ready, ensuring that the prophetic voice that challenged Ahab and Jezebel will speak with redoubled power to future kings and future challenges. God's mighty acts of power at the Jordan reveal that Yahweh is not detached or apprehensive as the old yields to the new. On the contrary, God continues purposely and actively through servants and agents into a future only dimly glimpsed in the present. None of us could have predicted this pandemic and the profound changes it's had on our lives and on our life together as a community of faith. And to be sure, it's cost us a great deal. But the season of change has yielded some positive fruit. Many churches, including our own, are now offering online ministries never considered previously. And these ministries are reaching both people from within the parish, especially those with mobility challenges or other obstacles to attending Sunday morning worship. And it's also reached outside our community, even as far south as the Caribbean. Many have found us out online, with some even beginning to attend in person. But mostly, these past few years have taught us to rely more on God than ever before. When change is thrust upon us, we learn to hold loosely to things, people, and ideas we once clung too closely to. We've had to learn to be flexible, to go with the flow, to consider the needs of others as greater than our own. And we've been able to do all this because we've known that through it all, God is with us. Just as God spoke through prophets like Elijah and Elisha, so God speaks through one another. Messages of hope and love. And it is crucial for us to recognize the ways God has been present to us during this challenging season. 
but recognizing God's grace in the midst of turmoil gives us the ability to better weather the storms ahead. When we know deep in our hearts that God has brought us safely thus far, we can have confidence that God will continue to sustain us no matter what the future holds. May God grant us courage to face whatever challenges lay in front of us with the assurance that God is forever with us and for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue on the road of life, seeking to walk with Jesus and follow his way of loving service, we take this time here and now to center ourselves in God's holy and demanding presence. As we bring our requests before God, may we be receptive to God's requests for us to reshape and reorient our lives in the way of love. Standing, sitting, or kneeling, let us be attentive to the inbreaking of God's kingdom, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. Holy One, you laid bare the reality of suffering, sacrifice, and service with those who would follow you on the road. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of love. Help us to know and embody the love that is not merely sentimental, superficial, or shallow, but rather sacrificial, selfless, powerful, and redemptive. God of love, hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of peace. Guide our thoughts and actions to cultivate and advocate for peace in our own land, our neighborhoods and communities, and indeed in places abroad. Call your disciples to manifest that kingdom of peace in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Syria, Somalia, Palestine, Ethiopia, Iran, Yemen, and beyond. God of love, hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of healing. Bless all doctors and nurses and therapists who serve those who are ill. Shine your light of healing on those who struggle with mental illness and addiction. Help us to support the abused, the lonely, the grieving, and those who are anxious about the future. And so we pray for those in our community who are in particular need. Marilyn H., Frank, Fred, John and Sylvia, Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Faye, Joan, David, Diane R., Mabel, Wayne, Gary, Norma, Harry, Steve, Karen, Marlene, the Kinch family, Wyatt, Lise, and Martin, Phyllis C., Susan T., Edna, Gord, Ian, Josh and Victor, Rachel Ann, Bishop Michael, and Dennis. God of love, hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of reconciliation. And so we pray for the church as we seek to carry on the work of Christ, reconciling and uniting our world, transcending the boundaries of race, gender, orientation, culture, creed, way of life. We pray for the ministry of this community, especially as we enter into a transition period in our ordained leadership. We pray for our rector, Stephen, for a smooth transition into his new work and education and we hold in prayer the rest of our clergy team at Resurrection, Leon, Margaret, Elizabeth, and Bob. 
We pray for Karen, our office administrator, Clarissa, our director of music, Isaac, our custodian, and all our volunteers. God of love, hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of justice. Help us to raise our voices for the voiceless. May we seek to support and uphold the dignity and beauty of those who are unhoused, those who are food insecure, those who are victims of systemic racism, those who are cast aside because of their sexual orientation or gender identity, the victims of human trafficking, the imprisoned, and refugees fleeing from chaos. Grant that governments and elected officials would have compassion for all of humanity. And we especially pray for the current turmoil in the United States and for all the women who will be impacted by this new legislation and whose safety and health have now been put in jeopardy. God of love, hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of restoration. Grant that we would, be open, we would open our minds and hearts to the suffering of your creation. Turn our attention to plants and animals, forests and oceans, which cry out for new life. Help us to change our patterns of living to model our care for creation and to prompt those in power and authority to devote their energy and time and resources into the work of restoring the environment. God of love, Hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of compassion. And in that spirit of compassion, grant that we would pray for those known only to us. And so I now invite the congregation gathered to offer prayers silently or out loud. Hear our prayer. God of the road less traveled, call us now to pursue your kingdom of joy. And so we pray with thanksgiving for all those who celebrate birthdays in our community this week for Ron Branch, Claire Stewart, Eric Donovan, and Larry Huggins. May God bless them as they celebrate and in the year ahead. God of love, hear our prayer. In our Niagara Diocese, we pray for St. Mark's Orangeville, the Venerable Peter Scott, Rector, the Reverend Deacon Richard Bodoin, Deacon, the Reverend Canon Stephanie Pello, Honorary Assistant, the Reverend Canon Lynn Thackray, Honorary Assistant, and the people of that parish. And in this community of Church of the Resurrection, we pray for Ed and Teresa McKay, Adam, Mike, and Tammy McNeil, and their families. And we lift before God Bob and Dorothy Coulter, in whose loving memory the flowers in the sanctuary are given today by Ken and Sheila Carnes and Eileen Gibson, gone but not forgotten. God of love, Hear our prayer. Crossbound God, nothing protects you from open sky and beckoning grave. Teach us to leave behind the fear that kills what is different, our love for what is dead and safe. May we set our face like you to find our true home, our unexpected city of peace, your fearless life. Through Jesus Christ, who will not turn back. Amen. We're about to transition to our first exchange of the peace that's not defined as being contactless. And I just want to tell you this little mini story as we do that. Years and years ago, one of our grandmothers, uh, let's say, in ordained ministry, the Reverend Canon Constance Williston, 
who was among the second wave of ordained women, the very second year. Um, just a fabulous and inspiring priest for me. In her latter years, she once exchanged the peace with someone who nearly broke her hand. This was long before the pandemic, but her hand was nearly broken because somebody was so sincere. Let's remember that that's, that's what happens. That is how we exchange the peace, right? And so she would forever then after that go um, at the exchange of the peace and if she had sleeves to tuck her arms or whatever, she would just do that. And I want to suggest to all of us that we really, um, Stephen was saying, in a sensitive way, that we really interpret how some comfortable somebody is um, and how close they want to be with us. But one of the ways that we can do that is just with a simple tuck of the arms. I've still got elbows, right? So, in the name of Constance Williston, I want to begin our piece by saying this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Would you stand, please? The peace of the Lord be always with you. God of wisdom, pardon me. God of wisdom.
wisdom. Receive all we offer you this day. Enrich our lives with the gifts of your spirit that we may follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. Holy God, lover of creation, we give you thanks and praise, for in the ocean of your steadfast love, you bear us and place the song of your spirit in our hearts. When we turn from your love and defile the earth, you do not abandon us. Your spirit speaks in every age through Hulda and Micah, through prophets, sages, and saints in every age to confront our sin and reveal the vision of your new creation. Joining in the song of the universe, we proclaim your glory singing. Gracious God, in the fullness of time you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you open the path from brokenness to health, from fear to trust, from pride and conceit to reverence for you. Rejected by a world that could not bear the gospel of life, Jesus knew death was near. His head, anointed for burial by an unknown woman, Jesus gathered together those who loved him. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his friend, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And now we gather at this table in response to his commandment to share the bread and cup of Christ's undying love and to proclaim our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe, upon these gifts that we bring to you. This bread, this cup, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all Glory is yours, creator of all, and we bless your holy name forever. Amen. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, our Savior taught us to pray.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. This is the table of the Lord, ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have never been before, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, because it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God of power, we are nourished by the riches of your grace. Raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, and fit us for his eternal kingdom, that all the world may call him Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. Um, now it's time for all of those of us who love to help the doxology just rock with the sound of resurrection. Instruments, people who are willing, there are no age barriers, there are no gender barriers, any of that stuff. There are no barriers at all to those who can make a noise for our God. All right. Oh my goodness. She's been waiting for hours. You got here early, didn't you, Kiana? Okay. She was ready here at, I don't know, early. I just, maybe it was six o'clock in the morning. I'm just not sure. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Can I have that little thing with bells? There we go. Anybody else? All right. Okay. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And we sing again.